In this video, we're going to look at setting up the virtual studio inside 3D Studio Max. I'm going to begin by resizing my perspective viewport to allow for more screen real estate. I could do that by using the Alt W keys on Windows. On Mac, it's slightly different. You're going to have to confirm that with the help menu. Or you could simply grab the seam between the viewports and drag to resize. So you'll notice my other viewports have been downsized to allow more real estate here for my perspective. I'm going to go ahead and Alt W anyways so that I have the full screen real estate. I'm going to be working from three views that I produced and a top, a front, and a side view. And all of those have a proportion of 12 by 20. So I'm going to go to the Create tab and we're going to use a plane object. Now what I could do is use the snaps out here and click and drag. Uh, it doesn't really matter one way or the other. Um, if I'm going to do this, but um, just for the sake of keeping this nice and neat and tidy, I'm going to start in the positive quadrant and just kind of drag out and let go. And I can come over to the uh, the basic parameters that go with this plane right now. And of course, if I've let go of the plane, then I can access the same parameters and modify once um, I've let go of it. And um, we're going to come in here and make the length of this be 120 and the width of this be 200 to correspond to the size of the maps that I've produced for my virtual studio. Now I also want to reposition this so it's at the origin. You notice when I resized it, it resized based on the transform gizmo which is parked at the middle. Now for future reference, um, you can move the transform gizmo and while we're here and talking about it, why don't we go ahead and do that. I'm going to let go of this geometry here, so we'll go back to the uh, Modify tab to access any parameters that go with the plane. And I'm going to move over one more into the Hierarchy tab, and we're going to find where it says Effect Pivot Only. I'm going to select Effect Pivot Only, and you'll notice now the Transform Gizmo has been highlighted. I want to reposition the Transform Gizmo so that it's parked right at this location, at the center. I'm going to organize all of my plane so that this is the origin point. So to move this, I also want to make sure that my object snap is turned on to select the pivot point and the vertex. I want to make sure this is parked on the vertex, not on a grid line out here. Okay. So if we go to move, we're moving now just the pivot point. It's affecting the pivot point only. You'll notice because this is yellow and this here is highlighted, it's not possible to directly access the geometry. Only the pivot point is being affected. So I'm going to click and drag. You'll notice that I've picked that up and I can drop it down on one of the vertices that make up this geometry and I want to put it right here. Go ahead and turn that off now. Okay, so now I'm going to reposition this so that my plane is parked at the origin and I want to place it so that that point is right there. I'm thinking downstream about how the graphic I've produced has numbers that correspond to a positive and negative direction and just to keep it less confusing for myself that way the the points uh, that might be produced out here I can always think of those being in a negative a quadrant or a positive quadrant um, inside my Cartesian coordinate system. Okay, um, next let's go ahead and find the map that will be placed on here. I'm going to go to the material editor and click and we're going to set up a new material. Now you'll be working with mental ray uh, in terms of rendering and uh, we don't necessarily need to use Mental Ray to set up the Virtual Studio, but uh, that's what my interface is set up with for the moment, so let's just work with that. I'm going to select on one of the color slots here, and I'm going to come over to where I see a color swatch and the None button. Now, you might have previously seen the interface looking different because it was with Scanline, or you might also see the interface looking different because it's using the new uh, version of the material editor. So uh, if you go underneath modes, you can find this version. I would suggest to you this is far simpler and this is going to be how I'm going to display um, anything to do with materials. I will not be using the new organization of the material editor to, to do this. So if I come down here, I've got a color swatch uh, selected. I'm going to come down here next to color. I find the none button. I'm going to click 
And when I click on that, I'm going to find a list. And inside this list, I'm going to find bitmap. I'm going to double click on that. And it's going to allow me to trace a path out to a material. OK, so I found a material. And we see the path to it here. Once you've selected a bitmap that's being used as a material, the interface looks like you see here. We can make further adjustments to how this works um, at this location. We're also down inside the material structure now. And uh, you'll notice there's a little button here that says go to parent. If this is available to you, you're down inside the material hierarchy. If I click on it and I'm back at the top of the material, you'll notice this is grayed out and inaccessible to me now. So um, oftentimes people get buried inside the material editor and get lost and don't know how to find their way in and out. And it'll take you a little bit of time to get used to that. But your cue is that uh, go to parent. If it's available, you're inside something. You could go down multiple levels setting up a fairly elaborate material. So uh, be aware of that. Um, if I want to go back down and make adjustments, then I'll select the button once again. And now I'm down at the level of where the map is being placed. A couple of key things here that have to be done. First of all, we need to turn on Show Map in Viewport. This is allowing us to see the material actually out in the viewport. And in real time, we can make adjustments to how it's placed and so forth. Um, this particular material is not being used with real coordinates. So we want to make sure that's turned off. And you need to make sure that the tiling is set one to one. So the map that I've produced is exactly the proportions of the polygon here on the stage. And I want that map to fill it up in total. So that means it tiles one unit in each direction. So it'll fit on here perfectly. OK, let's go back to parent. And what I'm going to do next is simply click and drag this onto my geometry. Now, at present, let's go ahead and close our material editor. At present, the map is the coordinates that have been described for this geometry um, are set to real world. I'm going to turn that off. And we can see that the map has been placed on here precisely to fill the whole uh, polygon up, the whole plane up. Now, to do this for the subsequent planes, I can proceed in a number of ways. I can move to an orthographic projection and then build the front and side views. Or we could build them all in plan and then rotate them up into place. Just for the sake of convenience, that's how I'm going to proceed. We're going to build them all up um, in plan view. Let's make another plane. I'm going to go to the plane, create. I'm going to click and drag. Let's turn off my snap temporarily. We'll click and drag and make a new plane. I know that the plane from the front view is also 120 by 200. And so I'll use that same dimension that we had previously. Let's zoom out a little bit. Let's also move this back out of the way just a little bit. And let's go find uh, the new map. So once again, I'm going to go to Material Editor. I'm going to select a new slot. I'm going to click on the None button next to the color swatch. We're going to find a bitmap. I'm going to trace down the path to the bitmap. And now that I have a bitmap selected, once again, I want to make sure this is not using real world scale. I want to make sure my tiles are one. And I want to make sure that the map is viewable inside the viewport. Once that's done, we can drag the map out onto the geometry. And once again, we need to select the geometry. I'm going to look inside my Modify tab and turn off real world map size. So you can see I have the front and top views here of the spaceship. And I want to rotate this up into space so that when I set up my virtual studio, I have something to refer to. I'm going to use my rotate tool. And I'm going to turn on my angle snap. And the angle snap, I want to make sure, has some unit of measure that allows me to cleanly rotate this to 90 degrees without having to do it painfully. And now I can also just simply type in the value down below. Now if I click and drag on the gizmo, uh, I can watch and see when it gets to 90 degrees, either by looking down in the transform type in box or by looking at the real-time display right on side the geometry.
So once this has been rotated up into place, now I want to position it so that this point here is parked in this location. Now one last thing, we could also reposition our axes of rotation like we had done on the, the last plane. And just to follow through with that, let's go ahead and do it. Let's go to the Hierarchy tab, Effect Pivot Only. Make sure that our Object Snap is turned on so that it's on Pivot, not Grid Points, and Vertex. And if we select the gizmo now, you see that when you get the Mercedes cursor, which is the gizmo, it looks like a three-legged um, pick. Then we're going to move it over to Vertex, which is a crosshairs, and drop it in this location. Is it necessary to reposition the gizmo to this place to have the Virtual Studio work? No. But I'm trying to pick up this aspect of the software while we're working through this, so you can also understand how, how to do it. Um, I'll now take the plane and with my snaps once again set back to vertex, we'll move the plane object from this point to this point and let's rotate around. We can see that a virtual studio has begun. The third plane that would be the front view, I'm going to just leave that um, out of the equation for right now. I think this gives ample description. One other thing you might consider doing with the Virtual Studio before proceeding with modeling is to organize all of these planes into a group which would allow you to move it all around as a unit. Now if I select all three planes and go to the group pull down, I can select group and I'm going to give this the name Virtual Studio. Now with this collection of planes organized as a group, you'll notice in the modifier tab it shows up as Virtual Studio. If I choose to access any of the planes that are inside of this, then I'll have to go to the group pull down and open the group. And if I wanted to reposition, say, the, um, the front view more to one side or the other, then we could do that and you'll notice that the group remains intact. You see a group's bounding box is described by these lighter pink color and then the items inside are described by, um, in this case, a, a kind of white outline. Once you're done manipulating the group, um, maybe for example I might even want to have this rise up and be just about at that location. Um, once I'm done manipulating this, it's best to go ahead and close the group back up so that just select one of the items, go to group, and close, and then once again the group moves around as a cohesive unit.